What's the secret of the Omer? I didn't choose that title, but <laughs> I will tell you what the secret of the Omer is. At least the one I'm going to tell you about. The Omer itself, what are we doing? What's the Omer? What is Sphere of Omer? The Chinuch comes along and he tells us. The Sefer Chinuch explains. Everyone knows the Sefer Chinuch, the book of education written by, excellent, anonymous. And the Sefer Chinuch, 13th century, tells us, okay, debatable, debatable, not so clear. Anyway, so he says Sefer Chinuch about the mitzvah of the Omer. I have to give a shout out. B'Shem Amro, our good friend Etiel Goldvich, I was speaking with him today, he shared with me his beautiful idea that I want to share with you right now. What is the Omer? What are we doing? It's when anybody has something which they love or they're excited about, so they count. They count. But the counting that people that are excited about usually is a count down, not a count up, and that's a classic question. So why are we counting up? Today is the first day of the Omer, second day, third day. It should be 50, 49. You ask a Kala, when are you getting married? When are you getting married? One month, 34 days, and, well, that'd be two months and four days, good. Two months, four days, 65 minutes, that's another hour. Uh, two months, you got the idea, and 12 seconds, 11 seconds, 10 seconds, 9 seconds. You ask a man, when are you getting married? I don't know. <laughs> you see the excitement, it's beautiful. Okay. But there's a countdown, there's a countdown, and when it comes to marriage, it's the final countdown. Anyway, but there's a countdown, but na na is a countdown. And this countdown, so why are we counting up what's going on? So what's the Omer? What is the Omer? What is the Omer? We're saying it's the Omer. You know, Omer is a measurement. There's another time in the Torah we find Omer that's found by what? By the Mun. Omer le Golgolis. It's got to be a certain measure. It's the Mun. The manna that felleth and frometh and from heaveneth. When the manna fell down from the heaven, mm, when that manna fell, all is known as the Mun. This is an Omer la Gulgol. What was this? What, what's the Shaykhis? What's the connection? And the question that Gemara asks already is so, why is it that Hashem, by the Mun, why did he give the Mun every day? Why not like a month supply or two month supply? Now, I don't know people's backgrounds here, so forgive me. I really, I, you know, I'm not being facetious and all serious now. I, I just, was that the right word again? No? Okay. Uh, I, I don't want to, God forbid, bring up memories that people have had in their lives if it's something which was negative of sorts. I'm going to speculate, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm going to hope I'm right. I hope I'm right that most of us in this room, or at least many of us in this room, grew up in a home which was either somewhat well-to-do or at least got by. Perhaps there are some that didn't. And for those who didn't, you'll understand a lot more than I will. Thank God I was very, very lucky with how I was raised in terms of having, there was always food. I was never, it was never like, God forbid, wake up and it's empty. But what about when a person wakes up and they look in their home and there is nothing there? There's absolutely nothing there. That's very difficult. How do you live with that? How do you function? But it's never, it's nothing's there. It's very, very hard. And then you wake up the next morning and you hear a knock on the door and you're like, kids, the old knock and run game. And you open up the door and there's nobody there, but there's food there. And there's enough food exactly for your family for that day. This is not a chiddish. This is just perhaps a perspective that I think when we learn about the man or anytime we talk about the Torah, we don't really, really think about what it was. No food, nothing, zero. Or in Espanol, cerro. Or you say nada. Not to be confused with nada, which means to swim, same word. But nada, which means zero. Nothing, empty. Finalizamos eso, es todo terminando. We're talking about no comer, nothing in there. You open it up and there's the food. Wow. Huh. Unbelievable. Amazing. Next day. No more food. You open the door. Kids, knocking again. Open the door, there it is again. You're like, God, please stop these games. Give me a month's supply. And God's like, uh-uh-uh. I'm going to give you every day. You see, because when does a person count up? You count up when there's growth. When a person is growing. It's been, again, God forbid, but unfortunately, 
or this part is the fortunate part, where people come and say, I've been clean for eight years now, or even eight weeks, or even eight days. I, you know, I, I, I haven't eaten, you know, non-kosher in this amount. I, I've been on my diet for this amount. It's counting up the things you work for, the things that are challenging and you need to work to grow are the things that we count up. What is Sphira Saomer? Sphira Saomer is the counting we're counting up and we're appreciating because we appreciate when we don't have. And then when someone gives it to us, oh, wow, do we appreciate it. Omer la Golgoles, the man, was a lesson in Akar Satov in recognizing what Hashem does for us all the time. We're going to go into Tarot and do it once a year, the carbon Omer. Don't eat that food, that new grain, until you bring this carbon, until you recognize and you appreciate and you're able to then go ahead and really enjoy it. Because without recognizing it, you can't really appreciate it. That's the bottom line. It's got to be growth and pushing and moving and working. Have you ever been in a relationship before for longer than a day or a week or two weeks? For the guy a week, the girl two weeks? Where that first initial stuff kind of wears down, it's not so, it's no longer that lovey-dovey cloud nine or eight or whatever cloud you're on. What do you do then? Then you work. You got to work. We have to be counting up and we have to be working towards it and putting into it. And the only way to do that is by taking stock and seeing what we have, appreciating what's there, seeing what it is, and really recognizing it. Someone will correct me, okay? I just remember hearing a Shalom Bayes discussion that there was a Shalom Bayes vibe where they were saying that Rav Chaim Shmulevitz used to write down every day Correct me if you heard this. Correct me. But I, th- I, heard her, I remember hearing 10, and here's the chiddush, new, excuse the pun, but 10 new things that he appreciated about his wife every day. Now, that's hard for me to understand. Okay? Not because I don't appreciate my wife. It's hard for me to say 10 new things every day. Like, what does that mean, 10 new things? I mean, there's only so many words in the dictionary. They say, what, what do you come up Like, you just start going from the A, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my wife is A, right? What, what do you go through? Right? But we go, we go through and really appreciate <laughs> We really appreciate it. Sit down, and you got to work for it. In the beginning, it's easy. Everything's right there because the relationship is wonderful. Everything's wild. It's incredible. Everything's wild. It's on fire. But what happens as things go on? Life sets in, and if we don't take time to take stock to see what it is, and we don't work on it, we don't start counting up, we don't start taking step by step, then forget about it.